Oh, hey, what's up, you guys? How's it going? It's Papa. And today I'm going to be doing a live commentary of my duel that I had at Locals. I was on Libermancer on the right, and my opponent was on Eldritch Brave Branded on the left. And yeah, this is my first time playing at Locals in about a couple of weeks or so, and I just stuck with what I knew. I wanted to play Libermancer one more time before we hit sprite format, and the deck was really good. Uh, as you can see, I would go ahead and trigger the e telly in the draw phase, so that way I can play around draw. And I summon out the Geek Boy. Geek Boy gave me Field Spell, which gives me access to Fire. And Fire is basically just going to go ahead and add me the Doom Broker. Uh, it's 60 cards in the main deck, so it is a lot of cards, and that's why I'm picking up half the deck up this time, because I just don't want to be carrying a full of Fat Breaker cards. But I offer the Foolish here on the Enchantress. Granted, I probably should have done that first, just to play around some hand traps in case he was playing it. But for the most part, he seemed like he didn't have anything, so I decided to go ahead and pop off here. Uh, the biggest thing that sucked about this hand was that I didn't have access to a tuner, so I mean, my hand could have been definitely a lot better than what it was, but it is what it is at the end of the day, so you kind of just have to play with what you got. And if you guys want to see more uh, kind of videos like this where I do the live duels with the commentary, please let me know in the comment section down below. But uh, it's going to be an interesting format next one, so I wanted to go ahead and start doing this now. That way, when we do get to the next format, we can go ahead and just have a talk, because why not? But uh, since I didn't have access to a tuner, I opted to go for the Heat Soul line of play, where that way I can go into Lampornicus with the two extra Gate Boys, and then use the uh, Lampornicus with the Fire to make the Heat Soul. And Heat Soul is basically just going to keep drawing me cards, uh, mainly looking for hand traps at this point. Uh, I could have a uh, normal summon one to keep playing and just extend from there, but I felt fine with the board that I had. I kind of wanted to just keep drawing hand traps off of Heat Soul, if I'm not mistaken. And... Having the Doom Broker with the Griffin Rider, and then I also had uh, two copies of Ghost Ogre in hand, I believe. I felt pretty safe. I felt like I wasn't going to be losing this duel no matter what. Uh, granted, yeah, I mean, opening up Double Ogre does kind of suck. But uh, with the board that I did have, I felt very confident. I felt like I was fine. And it, again, since I didn't know what I was going up against, I was just like, just kind of toying with it. Uh, he starts off with the branded opening here. He gets rid of the Conquistador, so that way he can go ahead and set up the Sanguine for the end phase. Uh, this is what made me realize, like, he can't kill me this turn because I definitely had enough to play around all this. He summons the Illuber off of the opening, and then I just go ahead and Griffin negate that just because I'm just assuming he doesn't have the Brain Infusion. Otherwise, I figured he would have tried to shotgun that uh, at the start of his main phase. But I had to explain to him that the Griffin does negate and destroy the Illuber, so that's why uh, it took a while there to get it into the graveyard. Uh, he then goes ahead and activates Right of Our Monster. I think this was a misplay by my opponent. He opted to go right package after doing all that. So, uh, yeah, I had to explain to him, too, that the right has to stay on the field for the Fable to resolve. And then he goes and fires off the Branded Fusion, so I go ahead and negate that with the Trap card. Uh, basically, bouncing back the uh, Dream Broker to hand, getting the fire back into the field, and then going ahead and searching off of that. I'm basically just going to go ahead and grab the Agent here. Uh, agent is basically what's just going to get me uh, more access in the following turn. But um, I he does try to trigger the Faithful because uh, he just... Uh, the chain links weren't all there. Uh, I knew what he was trying to do, so I just opted to go with the Ghost Ogre, so that way I could just get rid of the Faithful in the meantime. Because uh, he triggered the Faithful when I summoned the fire, and then I just... Uh, I know it was like a big misplay, but it is what it is, so I just opted to just go with what he was doing. Uh, I ogre the Fateful, the Fateful's gone, now he doesn't really have a whole lot of excess. Uh, the cards in the back row just don't really matter too much because he doesn't have a lot of gas left. And um, the Imperm on the Heat Soul did kind of hurt a little bit, but it felt fine. Uh, I think, if anything, he should have waited for me to make the Axis Code Talker, but... Uh, it was me paying a thousand life. I was already down to five thousand, I think, at that point, just off of my own damage, so that way I could keep drawing cards. But um, he just decided to save it for the Heat Soul, which is fine. Uh, I go ahead and just solve that issue later. But I add a card off of the um, Faithful, so that way I can get access to my Griffin again. And then uh, I just pitch the Dead Gamma because I already have stuff on the field, so it doesn't really matter. I uh, then summon off the agent, and then I think I normal summon the ogre here, so that way I can make my access code talker. Because uh, I didn't want to really use the cards I had on field. I wanted to save the griffin in case he had anything in hand that could hinder my plays. But with a slime token and then the eldritch on the field, I felt kind of confident. I felt like I was in a really good spot to be winning this matchup. And that's like basically what I go ahead and do here. I use the ghost ogre and the heat soul to make access code talker. I have the access to copy the heat soul, of course, to gain the three material, putting it at 5300. I go ahead and basically blow up the board. And then once I get rid of that slime token, he's starting to see the right on the wall. Goes ahead and scoops those cards and we go to the next game. 
Uh, this next game was kind of dirty though because I didn't really open up too optimal. It's a 60 card deck and I drew like, I think I drew Ogre, uh, Gamma, Right, Fateful, and I think the Trap card. Uh, it was either the Trap card or it was Imperm, but uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of other starters going on. I really just had the Right and the Fateful, but you don't really want to draw the Fateful in a 60 card deck. That's why you're playing 60 so you don't draw it. And well, sometimes you're just not as good at Yu-Gi-Oh as you think you are. But he starts off here with the Pot of Extravagance, and then he goes for the Foolish, I believe, just to send the uh, Golden Lord. That way he can go ahead and set it up during his turn. I lied. It was Enchantress. But he goes ahead and sends the Enchantress, and then he goes and... Uh, th this is what I had to keep clarifying with him. He kept putting the card face down before he added it to his hand, and I had to keep asking him what he was adding. Uh, so... He basically did that, uh, added the right, and then showed me it in the hand off camera. So that's what that was. Um, I didn't really say anything too much about it because I just thought, you know, it was casual. It's just locals. I don't mind. Uh, the blur, again, is a little bad. So I feel bad for that. But there's not much that I can do to fix the situation unless I get like a real setup. I'm just using my phone and my tripod just to record the matches. But it is what it is. Uh, he then goes to activate the faithful and I go ahead and ogre it. And... Uh, I think I ogred it, right? Hmm. I don't remember what I ogred here. It was either I ogred that or I ogred the... No, there was no way I ogred the griffin. I ogred something. I believe it was the faithful, but I could be wrong. But whatever it was, uh, he goes ahead and tries to summon the griffin rider again, and I had to explain to him that it was once per turn. So uh, the griffin doesn't get to come out to the field this time. He does do the aluber, and I think this is where I decided to gamma if I'm not mistaken, because I just didn't want him to have more... Uh, I used the Imperm, so it was Imperm, it wasn't the Libermancer Trap card. But I guess, grantedly, I probably should have used the Gamma there instead of the Imperm, because the Gamma would have gone away, and then it would have decked thin, and I could have just drawn like a better card for my situation. Uh, and then I could have just used the Imperm during my turn, because the Gamma and the Driver would have gone away anyway. But I didn't take that into consideration, so that's unfortunate there, to say the least. But I trigger off the right here, because this is basically the only line of play that I have. I go right, activate the Adventure from deck, and then he has Griffin Rider out now, so he now he has an Omni Gate uh, with the Aluber and the Golden Lord, and it's basically just not looking good for me. Uh, I had to tell him that uh, that's basically what I was resolving. I was doing that, but uh, as you can see, like I'm not really gonna have too much here. He's gonna go ahead and just get rid of the Faithful anyway with the Griffin Rider. So I'm just left with the token, and then the token's just not doing me too much work here. Uh, well, I think when it gets back to him, I'm just going to realize that, like, I don't really have too much going on here. Uh, and I think I just pass after the... Or, I don't pass. I think I just scoop it up here. He sets a card, and then he attacks my guy, gets rid of... The, or, he Draco backs the token, and then uh, attacks me directly for, like, 45, I think. And I'm just not looking good in this situation. Uh, he probably has, like, another Imperm or, like, another Eldritch Trap set. And I basically just scoop it up here because there's no point in playing. I think I just drew like another like dead hand trap. I think I drew like Ash or something, something that just didn't really help my situation. So I just opted to go ahead and scoop it up. And now we are in game three and game three, I definitely had a much better hand and I was able to go off just a little bit more. I go ahead and start off with preparation of rides, getting me the illusion of chaos and then activating the enchantress. Uh, he goes ahead and ashes the enchantress, which is a fair call, but I mean, I think, if anything, like, with the first board I made, I think he should have saved the Ash for maybe, like, a Helka Fibrax or maybe, like, the Heat Soul or something. But uh, with that, I just decided to go ahead and pop off because he didn't have Ash and he didn't have Joel, of course. So I just, my friend Anthony, he goes ahead and looks at my, at his friend's top deck just to see if whatever he's going to draw is going to help his situation. But at the time, we were getting really close to the clock running out, so I decided to just try and play as fast as I could, but I also, like, the thing that sucks about this deck is that you have to make, like, very, very certain plays, and um, basically, if you're not keeping track of your zones either, that kind of sucks, because the Amirage uh, effect to get the Arborea does come up a lot, and uh, it's dirty, so... Uh, I had to play around zones and I was just making sure I didn't mess anything up because my main line of play here is basically just to go for the scythe play. Uh, I go ahead and summon the rocks, the red rose off of the Hulk, make the riser dragon. The riser dragon is going to go ahead and send the, I'm pretty sure it was the um, snow I sent here because uh, snow is basically just going to be the MVP for the rest of this duel, uh, meaning that way I can go ahead and just keep blocking attacks and uh, booking stuff face down, basically whatever I needed. Uh, the Golden Lord uh, just won't be able to uh, 
be too big of an issue because it can't be destroyed by card effects when it's sent off its own effect. Uh, but with the snow there to just keep flipping it face down so that way I take no damage because again we were getting really close to time so I wanted to make sure that no matter what I did I was able to play around losing in time. Uh, I think here I go ahead and do the illusion and I grab the souls and then the souls is going to go ahead and draw me two. My hand was dirty. I think I had a droll already in hand when I started the turn. And I think when I drew off of the souls, I drew into Ash. And I think I drew Imperm. It was really gross because I knew I had three hand traps in hand at the end of this turn. But like my draws were godly off of souls. Souls was so amazing in this deck. Uh, I was still playing the one souls with the two illusion. I definitely don't think you need more because you're not resolving it again after turn uh, one from what I've noticed and you're most oftenly putting back the illusion anyway off of its own effect but yeah right there you can see I drew the ash and then uh, the purple card being the imperm so my draws were pretty good and they were definitely in my favor today but uh, the matchup is going good uh, it's definitely in my favor right now I still have the scythe set so that way I can go ahead and make a barone during his turn as well but uh, I go ahead and pass here because there's no really big reason for me to go past this. Uh, he's going to go ahead and banish six off the top for, or not off the top, but he banishes the six for the extravagance, and I believe I do chain the ash here. Yeah, just so that way I can't let him draw two. I mean, I know I'm already in a really good spot enough, but off of the resolution, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Hulk of Firebrax. I'm going to summon the TG Wonder Magician, hitting the Scythe. The Scythe's going to activate, and then I'm going to use the Wonder Magician and the Scythe to make the Baron to floor. And basically just not my not let my opponent be able to play but he's still able to go ahead and do things he's going to activate the enchantress granted i maybe should have negated this but i wanted to resolve that draw as well so he couldn't really keep playing it anyway so i go ahead and drop the draw off of that so now it makes it to where he doesn't have access to the griffin rider doesn't make it access to having the draco back as well and i can tell my opponent's having a hard time here because i definitely did uh, hurt his hand and his play but he's going to do the golden lord and he's going to target the baron so i decided to just negate it and then he summons it back anyway and he attacks over the baron which is fine because now both of his rights are in the graveyard and i just know he doesn't have a whole lot of follow-up so uh, i'm just going to go ahead and reveal the doom broker uh, summon out the geek boy and then i think here is basically going to be close to the writing on the wall oh that's right he draws he plays rivalry of warlords which is just a card i did not expect him to use at all and that's what kind of put a hinder on my play because I really wanted to know like what the best optimal line of play for me to do was. I didn't have another spell or trap to use off of the uh, souls, otherwise I probably could have drawn the out. I did keep the cyclones in the main deck in case I was losing to like Mystic Mine or uh, anything else. I did know he was on Eldritch, so I wanted to make sure that I got rid of the traps so they didn't activate in the end phase to keep getting him more uh, recurgence. But um, I go ahead, do the spell, I uh, get that, and I think here I do souls for one and I just didn't draw anything good I think I just drew like another hand trap or something but it wasn't anything that could get me out of the situation I was in which is unfortunate I was also hoping to just draw into enchantress so that way I can just get um just get access to the draco back because the draco back would have dealt with that rivalry and I would have been just fine but I do opt to snow here and then I think here I just basically get this get the um souls out of the attack position which was hurting i mean granted i could have just switched positions but um i kept thinking i had more lines of play but i didn't i banished a lot of my spells so that way i couldn't go into sleep anyway which kind of sucked but sometimes that's just Yu-Gi-Oh, man sometimes you just uh can't play around it so i just summoned the heat and then i set one i think i set the intervention if i'm not mistaken just so that way it could be live for another turn uh, it was either that or an E-Telly. I just wanted to be able to get rid of that rivalry. But again, at this point, I'm just top decking. I'm just trying to wait to see if I can get rid of the rivalry. But it was either that or I did draw into the Draco back. I'm not too sure. But all I know is that I was able to get into the correct line of play to where it was to where I could win this one. Basically, since the clock was running low, I had to just take that into consideration. Uh, I had to try and uh, find a way to deal some kind of damage to my opponent because he had already attacked over me which sucked because it put me in a like bad predicament where I was thinking like oh my god I actually might lose this match because of time but I had to basically find a way to just attack over the golden lord and then like get rid of whatever that other monster was but I think what I ended up doing I think I draw impermanence which is also just another out to the rivalry uh but 
I had to make sure that he got the, um, the, uh, what's it called? He had to flip the golden lord back over. So not only that, but I had to let him kill the Selene and then I had to keep it face up. So that way I can get rid or not get rid of it. That way I can keep the impermanence live, negating the Eldritch and then negating the rivalry. But I think this is, yeah, right there. That's the imperm I just set. I go ahead and tack over the other one. I don't get why he set the Illuber, maybe just as extra protection or something, but he flips it up. He attacks over my Selene. That's what puts me into the scare where I think I'm at like 700 or 750 life. And I basically just had to like basically deal damage here or I was losing the game. And so I imperm, I target the Golden Lord, of course, and then I just start comboing off. Uh, granted, I probably should have just made a guy so that way I could attack over, have some kind of help, and then combo after that if I really wanted to play around the clock. But uh, I had to do a lot because, again, time was running out. I used those to make the access code, putting it at 43, which is just enough to get me out of the potential time scare. And uh, the Golden Lord goes away. He loses like 18, I think, in life. And uh, going from there, doesn't really have a whole lot he can do. I mean, he realizes like the clock is running out too. We both did. And as he's trying to like figure a way out of the situation he's in, he flips up the set Fateful, which I don't know why it was set, but he flips it up, activates it to add the monster. And then uh, he showed me that he added the Griffin Rider, I believe. And then I had to explain to him what was happening. Uh, but he didn't discard because I told him he had to discard off of Fateful. But it is what it is. He realizes he can't do anything. The clock is out. He's not going to have enough time to do anything in the main phase. And it's because of that, he loses the game. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, this has been Papa, and I will catch you all in my next video.